Good evening. Yeah, welcome to another edition of Import Expo Platform Facebook Live from Three Team Press Trade Academy. My name is Dele Aimbo. Um, <laughs> I'll continue from where I stop on starting a managing export business. And we're discussing starting a managing export business and we spoke about What do you see in Nigeria today? That was last, that was yesterday. And today I'll be talking about something a little bit different. And that's talking about the trend of export in Nigeria. When I talked about the fact that Nigerian states are billionaires in dollars, I basically mean that Nigerian state can make a lot of money by simply taking the export business seriously. And just advocating for the need for the government to begin to consider that. And that if we can take that seriously, that might mean that government will not have to be looking for money again to be able to do what they need to do. Nigerian state are billionaires in dollars, and I maintain that stand. Potentially, they are, in the recess of the world they are, I think the challenge has been how do they unless that potential to be able to get exactly what they are looking for. Nigerian state are billionaires in dollars. Nigerian state are billionaires in dollars. So today I'll be looking at the trend of export of Nigeria in recent time. Um, um, currently, as at quarter one, quarter one actually, quarter one of this year, because that's the most recent result we have. We do not have for quarter two already, even though we are in quarter three. <laughs> Even though we're in Q3, hopefully in under one or two months, the National Bureau of Statistics, as usual, will definitely release that data. But I know the most important data for MBS now <laughs> will definitely be the data for um, the data that will be more important now is the GDP data. So I know that. Um, most likely, eventually, we'll get that data and be able to know where we are. But so far, so good. Trend of export in Nigeria. Between 2016 and 2019, the export of Nigeria has been growing, both to ECOWAS and other African countries. Um, it was as low as $153 million for ECOWAS country in 2016 quarter one, but at quarter one of 2019, it has moved from 153 million dollars to about 834 million dollars. We're getting closer to a billion dollar in terms of the export of Nigeria to ECOWAS. Now, if you check our export of Nigeria to ECOWAS, Nigeria is a major beneficiary of export. Hello, madam. We're a long time. <laughs> If you check Nigerian export to ECOWAS, you will realize the fact that, number one, it's not just growing. Nigeria is a major beneficiary of that, of that sector. You know, Nigeria also is a major, I mean, Nigeria is, uh, the whole of ECOWAS is about 350 million, Nigeria is about 200 million. So Nigeria is actually more than half of the whole of ECOWAS. <laughs> Nigeria is more than half of the whole of Ecuador, so I can understand the reason why. Nigeria is a major beneficiary, contributing about 350 million. I'm sorry, we're consuming about 40, more than 40 percent, actually. More, more, than, more than 40 percent of export into Ecuador are from Nigeria alone. Now, which is the reason why I have issue with those individuals that feel Nigeria should not sign the AFCFTA, believing that AFCFTA will not be of benefit to Nigeria. And I'm saying, why is it that we are not looking at data? Why is it that people just take a position based on some sentiments? Those sentiments are not, I'm not discarding them. I'm only saying that, can we just be a bit more scientific in our, in taking position? Such that I'm not taking a position because I feel, of, because I, well, because what I feel, but about the real issue at hand. And the real issue here is that, the current free trade agreement, regional FTA in the ECOWAS, is Nigeria benefiting. Now, what people are saying that will happen 
in terms of uh, some people are going to come and take over our place and some people are going to come and set up businesses. We just come up with conjectures without facts to back it up. We just come up with conjectures. And, that, and those are, you know, is it not interesting that people will argue based on a particular information, which is not a fact, it's just based on sentiment, and on the strength of that, take a decision. If we have a smaller agreement like ETLS, and Nigeria is a major beneficiary, on what basis are we saying we are not going to be one of the major beneficiaries of AFCFTA covering 55 countries? If we have 50 countries in West Africa, I guess a major beneficiary. The export of Nigeria to ECOWAS, to Africa, also have been growing. In Q1, quarter one of 2016, Nigerian export to the rest of Africa was $279 million. As at quarter one of 2019, export of Nigeria to, Eco to the Africa has grown from 279 in 2016 to $1.8 billion in 2019. So, I don't understand. The individuals that believe Nigeria is not going to benefit from AFCFTA, on what basis are we raising this argument? Um, on what basis? This, I feel the fact is speaking for itself because there have been arguments and counter argument about the fact that Nigeria should not sign. Thank God, eventually, I believe it, it was just politics that government eventually signed. How on earth are we going to believe and just assume that, oh, it's not going to be good for us? And on what basis? The current data show that Nigeria is still among the top exporters in, in Africa. Between the first and third top exporter in Africa. The data is speaking for itself already. On what basis? The trend of export of West of Nigeria in West Africa and in the world shows that Nigeria export to this region is growing. So if the export is growing, why are we not going to sign AFCFTA? Meaning there are more markets for Nigerian products in the region. Of course, we are doing oil out of it to South Africa, and we are doing fertilizer to Egypt. We are doing a lot of this happening. There is no doubt about the fact that there are issues with export. There are issues with trade. But my question is, Every other country has the same challenge. That challenge is not peculiar to Nigeria alone. The only issue is like some people have just decided that this is what they want to see. And you know that's the beauty of human beings. It's what you want to see that you will see. It's what you don't want to see, you will not see. If you want to see that there is opportunity, you will see opportunity. If you don't want to see opportunity, you will not see opportunity. You are going to give a reason why it will not happen, it will not work. Even though the fact speaks for itself. So how on earth are we going to have this kind of opportunity in Nigeria and say we are not going to exploit it? Simply because some people feel, oh, they will come and flood our market. Flood our market? Should that be an issue we should be talking about? We should be talking about the father. How do we monitor and a private sector complaint should not leave it to the other government. You should discuss with the government. We, want, we are the one that will be affected when they flood the market. It's not the government people. We want to be part of the monitoring committee. Those are the conversations we should be having. That, so that when I see new product flooding the Nigerian market, I'm able to know that, okay, this has substantial input of local content of Africa, 60% according to the agreement. Those are the things that should worry me. Those are the things I should be more concerned about. Nigerian states are viable. Nigerian states are billionaires in dollars. If only Nigerian state do what it needs to do in terms of empowering its people 
and taking advantage of the market around us and do not, do not just look at the West or the Asians. We have to depend on ourselves. AFCFTA is an opportunity for us to trade with ourselves. Nigeria already doing $1.8 billion in one quarter. In one quarter. $1.8 billion export of Nigeria. In one quarter. Like I said, a number of uh, items being shipped are petroleum um, uh, products. But the fact is that we're shipping within West Africa. And that's very critical. That's very important. Because at the end of the day, <laughs> at the end of the day, what is good for us is that we do exactly what will help us to grow. Africa needs to become independent of the West. Africa needs to become independent of the Asian. Africa needs to be able to, we have the market, we have over a billion people, so we need to sign. Now, I've been signed. And I've been writing an article on this. My second article will be out tomorrow. And the second article examine FTAs around the world and talking about the fact that FCA is not the... It's a means to an end. It's not the end in itself. So if you are going to grow our economy, if you are going to enjoy the benefit of the agreement, what we have done is a step in the right direction. It's not the destination. We now have to go beyond what we have done and begin to see what we can do to now enjoy the benefit that should accrue to us as a result of the sign of that agreement. AFCFTA is necessary, is good for us. The government have signed. The question we should be having is, how do we go ahead about monitoring? I believe strongly there should be an implementation committee. And that implementation committee should ensure that they include private sector among the monitoring team so that the people that the chew is pinching do the monitor themselves report to the right agency apply the right pressure to ensure government do what they need to do to protect the home industry those are the conversations we should be having those are the conversations we should be having but the trend we have clearly show that nigerian export is growing massively to africa Trend clearly show that Nigerian export is growing massively to Africa. Either we like it or not, what we need to do is to begin to look at how exactly do we ensure that we enjoy all the benefit that this gives us. And one of the ways to enjoy the benefit is basically, is basically to look at engaging with AFCFTA. Now, in the first quarter again, what is the uh, what are the top export of Nigeria? Top export of Nigeria in the first quarter. Top export of Nigeria, as usual, mineral fuel is now eighty six point four eight percent. We have issues as a nation, no doubt about it. But you know what? I also have good news of the fact that our export is a bit better. What do I mean? Nigeria being the major, Nigeria having its non oil export, which ended at about 6.2% last year, this year going to about 13.4%. <laughs> I think it's a step in the right direction. Because if there's one thing we must do, if there's one thing we must do, is that we are able to grow, significantly grow. Our export, especially the non oil export, because it is today we're not doing well as far as non oil export is concerned. We are at 13 percent, that means we are still very, very vulnerable. We are vulnerable in the sense that our major foreign exchange earner is still oil. Mineral oil, mineral fuel, 86.48%. Nigeria in that period exports ship and boat of $1.1 billion. Sesame seed, $110 million. Cocoa, $83.2 million. Fertilizer, $58.6 million. Electrical, $28.5 $28 million. Tobacco, $18.5 million. 
What's interesting to me on this data is that the top export of Nigeria in quarter one of 2019 is not mainly agro commodity, non oil export. The commodity, agro commodity, they are just sesame seed and cocoa, which amount to about $200 million. Or about $200 million. All the other ones, from the $1.1 million of both, to 56.8 of fertilizer, 28.5 of electrical, 18.5 of tobacco, all show that we have a lot of value added manufactured goods. If you go and check most of these value added manufactured goods, most of them are going to Africa. So, someone is now telling me Nigeria. <laughs> Nigeria should not say FCFT. When we are having increasing number of manufactured goods going to Africa. Increasing number of manufactured goods going to Africa. How do you explain that? With over 13% of value of non export products for the quarter one, out of the manufactured good is about 10%. Of total export and 77% of non oil export. I think we're in the right direction. We have our issues, security issues, a big one in Nigeria right now, very big one that the government really needs to do something about and address. Very big one. And there are so many narratives around it that really, if you continue, this news, good news we are seeing, or this program we seem to be making, we might eventually not be able to make it. Simply because. Insecurity. Insecurity is becoming a major issue. Major issue that really needs to be addressed. But the issue is, we are making significant progress in terms of non-oil export. And whatever anybody thinks about it, for me, it doesn't really matter. What matters right now is the fact that Nigeria is making huge, huge, huge progress as far as non-oil export is concerned. Huge, huge, huge project as far as non export is concerned. And the implication of that for me is that we need to then harness this potential. If we have been doing this much, maybe by the time we now have inside AFCFT, we cannot ship duty free. The or competitors in those countries who probably are shipping the same product for other location outside Africa might begin to look at all more within Africa and Nigeria can begin to export more. Why? The data speak for itself. The data speak for itself. But when you look at the majorly traded agri product, they are sesame seed, cocoa, cashew nut, frozen shrimp, ginger, agro food, flour, special plants, cotton, and cashew tora. These are major export products within the first quarter. Sesame seed is leading. Cocoa is number two. You know, cocoa and sesame seed are always competing. Cocoa and sesame seed are always competing. Maybe by the end of the year, when we have the main crop of cocoa, we can have more cocoa coming up. But cocoa and sesame seed are always, always, always competing. I'm not happy with the data for a Greek export because I don't want us to be a Greek exporting a Greek. We should not be the farmer of the world. We should not be the farmer of the world. The more you export a Greek, the more you export jobs, and the more you import poverty. Whenever you export agri product, you export jobs, and you import poverty. Whenever you export agri product, you export jobs, and import poverty. So, I am of the opinion that we need to stop exporting. Stop exporting. Stop exporting <laughs> agro commodity. And some people will say, okay, so if we stop, what are we going to be exporting? Add value. Let's add value to it. You say we are not ripe? I think we are. I think we are. I think we are. I think we are. If we only want to wait for everything to be right, we will never start. If you want to wait for everything to be ripe, 
you will never start. The only way to start, the only way to start is to take action immediately. We should not wait for the right time because the right time really will never come. The right time really will never come. The right time really will never come. We cannot keep waiting for that right time. We can start anyhow. We can start anyhow. And then fix all the rest along the way, which is my issue also with people that say we should not sign. And I said, look, sign and then fix your issues along the way. Those issues will not be fixed in a day. Those issues will not be fixed in a day. Those issues will take a while for them to be fixed. So you know what? Let's engage the genius of the and. And drop the tyranny of the all. It's either you fix before you sign. Don't sign before you fix. I'm saying sign and then fix. Do it concurrently. Sign and then fix. Do it concurrently. So... Agri commodity export, I'm not happy about it. I think we should stop it. I think we should slow down on it. I think we should begin to add value to those products and begin to export them to Africa. All right. The next thing I'm looking at is the trend of export, of non oil export and percentage share of total export. Trend of non oil export and percentage share of total export from 2016 to 2019. Now, look at this non oil export have a peak in 2018, and the peak was $1.6 billion. Um, sorry. Yeah, $1.6 billion. $1.6 billion, that's 12.2% of non-oil export. So non-oil export was 12.2% of total export in 2019 January. It went down to $607 million, that's 4.9% in 2000 and in uh, second quarter, 3.4% in third quarter, and 6.46% in fifth quarter. And I noticed a trend. It seems like quarter one, from quarter one to quarter three, there is always a slide. 2016, quarter one, slide to quarter two, from 214 to 174 million, and then green in quarter three, and then the peak at quarter four. In 2017, the IS again, Every year, the highest is always early quarter one. Every year, the highest is always quarter one. 2017, quarter one, 4.75, went down to 4, uh, sorry, 4.75, went down to 4.59, and quarter three, 3.38, three, three, and then quarter four. So it's like it peak in quarter one, go down quarter two, go further than quarter three, and start going up quarter four. And that is consistent. So, but there is a, a major surge between the peak of quarter one, 2017 and 2018, which is 12.2% from 5.7%. And the peak, but there is a slight increase in the peak of quarter one, 2018 and 2019 from 12.2% to 13.3%. So, there seems to be something happening in that quarter one. And what's interesting about quarter one is a major push-up. Major booster, major <laughs> factor accounting for this increase is mainly manufactured product. So, what's this about increase in manufactured product that we export in the first quarter of the year and in the last quarter of the year? That's a subject of investigation. That's a, a, a a research topic that needs to be investigated and I will try to work on it and I'm hoping I'll be able to get that reason out maybe sometimes in future but I, I can see that trend consistently happening with manufactured good taking the lead if it was uh, uh, and if it was I would have said okay if it's agreed, it's okay because of seasons 
But it's not a Greek that's taking the lead. It's manufactured good. And like I said, majority of the manufactured good go to West Africa. That is why AFC, FTA is very necessary. It's very important, very necessary. Very important, very necessary. And it's so critical for us as a nation. Now, um, I still have a lot of data to work with. I think I will round off with the the data, okay? I think I should just round off here. Let me just round off here. And then I'll continue from the data on... Um, the data tomorrow I'm continuing on is the data on... Okay, let me just save the image. That will help me to be able to... I'm trying to find a way to ensure that... <laughs> I remember where I stopped. I would like to add... Okay, go ahead. So, as a round off, I'm saying again, Nigerian state are billionaires in dollars. This item being produced are produced in Nigerian state. This item being produced, I produce in Nigerian state. This item being produced are produced within the Nigerian states. Cumulatively, we are getting this. Nigeria they can take advantage of this, both on the minerals and agri commodity side, to be able to ensure that at the end of the day, Nigeria state become not just potential billionaires in dollars. Nigeria state are indeed and validly billionaires in dollars. How do I know? The data speaks for itself. We we'll continue the money tomorrow as I continue part four, or part five rather, of. Nigerian state are billionaires in dollars, and I'll be looking at Nigerian Nigeria export trend. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening. My name is Dila Yimba. This import export platform, Facebook Live from Trinity State Academy. Remember this program on weekdays, 8 a.m., 6 p.m. Um, uh, <laughs> 8 a.m., 6 p.m. I'm hoping that I won't have issues because I have some engagement during the week. I hope that I won't have issues, but even if it comes late, I will still try as much as possible to be able to do it in the course of the week. Thank you very much for listening. See you tomorrow, 8 a.m., and bye for now.